Hi guys, George here from Zero Pure Productions, and welcome to Cooking Simulator. I've played this for a couple hours at this point. I've played the tutorial and the first couple days of the story mode, which didn't necessarily go too well. So today I thought I might try to make three different meals in sandbox mode where you're not on a timer. I figured that maybe I can do a better job if I'm not racing against the clock. So what should we make for our first meal because you can just choose it is completely up to me what i want to make let's start with something not too easy but not too hard either how about a burger literally just a hamburger new order all right tomato onion cheddar burger buns burger meat you only get two top buns so this is going to be interesting. So we need one 20 gram slice of tomato, one 20 gram slice of onion, and 25 grams of cheddar. Chop. And the chop. It's a pretty good cut on that tomato. Can't really see what I'm doing with this onion, because I kind of just didn't really arrange things super well. Oh, and I cut the uh, burger meat. That's fine. You know, these are both a little thick, but we're just going to make two. All right, so one slice of cheddar. That's an okay slice. And what did it need to be? 25 grams. 41 grams. All right, well, that's a little bit too much. Can you not put the cheese like that? Well, what if we just trim this one slice of cheese down to size a little bit? Because if this is 41, then let's just make it a little bit more of a square. Did that not cut it? Oh, I don't know what just... All right. My cheese is disappearing. My cheese is magical. Oh, and it's gone. Okay. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. Here we go. This weird shaped block is... 24 grams, that's as close as we're going to get. So put that with our um, slightly prepped ingredients. Bake burger buns for 30 seconds. I can do that. That seems simple enough. Right, so let's bun one, bun two. Can I really not just like... Can I just... Just let me... Come on. Because I don't want these to cook unevenly. We've got to space them out a little bit. There we go. Perfect. That only took 80 years of my life. All right. 30 seconds in here. All right. Pull these out. Ooh, look at that color. That is beautiful. Hey, you. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, and turn this off. Probably a good idea. Alright, season burger with 3 grams of salt and 3 grams of pepper. And then fry for 50 seconds on each side. Salt. And... Pepper. Oh. Well. That does not look like the most, um, evenly salted salt and pepper. But, you know what? We're just going to roll with it. So we're going to turn the griddle on. And let's take our <laughs> evenly salted and peppered burger. And I always forget how to do this. There we go. Alright, that is ready to be flipped. So let's just come over here and... There you go. Perfect. Alright, and the burger is done. We can just pull that off of our griddle. And we can just set that aside for right now. Just... We can just dump this. Just like that. That's fine. Maybe don't put it right there, but yeah, sure. 
Transfer onto a plate. Burger bun, onion, burger, meat, cheddar, tomato, burger bun. I like how there's no lettuce in this entire kitchen. So here's the problem. If I put the bun down, it puts it down like that. So we have to resort to using our tongs once again. Rotate and release. Perfect. Now let's do the same with our burger. Wait, wait. Burger bun, onion. So onion first. If I can reach the onion. There, oh, almost. Nope, and all right. We're having some trouble here. Come on, just, uh... Mmm, almost. I'm getting there. Pretty good for a first try, I feel. Also, I was supposed to put ketchup on the burger. So, uh, we're gonna have to redo about half of this. 10 milliliters of ketchup. Drizzled directly on the burger. I've never heard of someone putting ketchup on the burger before it goes on the bun. It's four... There we go. Perfect amount of ketchup. Tomate without, you know, knocking everything off the plate. Oh my god, there we go. Oh, we're doing it. Cheese? <gasps> yes. And last but not least, top bun. This is going to take me another eight years, just watch. It's not going to stay on top because of the sh shape, size, words of this cheese. But you know, we're doing- no. Oh, There we go. Alright. If that is a burger that you wouldn't eat, then you're crazy. F How did that happen? Who said you could go there? The burger meat's cold now. The burger meat is now cold. It is officially cold. We're just slapping it on there at this point. Whoever this asshole is who ordered this burger eight years ago, they're dealing with it. Alright. Here's your burger. Delicious, huh? Man. I'm not gonna lie. Three stars is probably more than I deserved. Not enough salt. Too much pepper. I added three and three. Bad cutting technique. Bad cutting technique. Wrong amount of product. The cheddar was the closest one to the right amount of product. Burger meat was too cold. That is a fair complaint. You know what? I will take that under advisement. How much do you think we can break this kitchen? Like, how badly can we just break everything?
All right. I present the latest and greatest meal you'll ever see. Trout pumpkin soup with toast. What's in the soup? Honestly, I don't even remember at this point. But um if that doesn't look good to you, then you're uh you're crazy. Kitchen looks all right if you ask me. Now, what is that sound? Like, where is that sound coming from? All right, on to our second meal. Now that we are masters of the kitchen. A burger, the problem is that's too simple. That's too easy. We need something that's really going to challenge me. Aside from burgers and soup. And what better to challenge yourself more than burgers and soup than pasta? Let's do... Here we go. Blended Fusilli Aglio Olio e Peperoncino. Beautiful. It's kind of weird that um, all the TVs just seem to break on their own, huh? Alright, so we need a pot, salt, and pasta, and boil that for 30 seconds. Then transfer to a casserole. Do we have a casserole? I don't even see a casserole on here. I mean, I guess we could put it in a bucket if we were getting really crazy, but, um... We'll put it in a paella pan. Which I think we have one right over here. You know, paella. Same thing. So let's add this to the pot. Probably should have measured this out. Um... Well... Let's see, 400 grams of fusilli. I need 160 grams. I guess we could just pick them out until we have enough. That seems like the uh, professional way to do this. And now add salt. Five grams. Now even I know, you're supposed to salt the water after it's boiling and then you add the pasta. We're gonna boil that for 30 seconds, then transfer to our, our casserole. Reserve water, okay. So what if we pour the water into this pot, and then we'll have nothing but pasta left in the original pot, huh? Is that all the water? Let's see. Oh. Yep, that is just pasta. Wait, 100 grams? I had... I had more pasta in there. Where did my pasta go? Why is my pasta falling out of my... Why is the pasta falling out of my pot? Fusing through the bottom of my pot? I don't think so. This pasta is not hot enough. Might need to reboil this pasta. It was hot before. Oh! Did my game crash? Yep, my, uh, my game crashed. Well, at least this time we have a clean kitchen. So that's kind of nice. Now, to make things a little bit easier, we're gonna multitask a little bit. We're not gonna start boiling the pasta until we're also working on the sauce because, as we learned last time, ingredients can go cold. Let's start prepping stuff for the sauce. We got our garlic here. Gotta cut this into five gram pieces. Am I even gonna be able to cut it that small? Four grams, five grams, five grams. Oh, is that one still whole? No, it's not. Okay. Wow, beautiful. Where were these pouring skills before when I needed them? We're gonna add olive oil to the pan. 40 grams and 41 milliliters of olive oil. So, one milliliter off, but it's gonna be fine. 45 seconds for the pasta, and 15 seconds for the sauce. So this is what they meant by a casserole before. I was thinking one of the big glass casseroles. I wasn't thinking about a type of plate. 
So that's my bad. I apologize for that. One and two. I'm still thinking that we need to reserve the pasta water, which it wasn't entirely clear on how they wanted me to do that. So we're just gonna go back to my two pot step or two pot method from before. Is that all the water? Looks like it. Oh, okay. Can you not go through the pot again? Really? We're gonna do this again? Stay in there, huh? Are you too hot? You're too hot to pick up. Bullshit. Damn it. Almost. Where's all this pasta coming from? How did you get down there? Oh my god. There we go. Now, we can do this. This is only going to be for 15 seconds. After which we are going to... Add 40 milliliters of reserved water and 5 grams of chili flakes, and then add the fusilli. Ooh, this is gonna get tricky. Okay, in 15 seconds, kill the heat. We're gonna add 40 milligrams of the water. That's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be interesting. Just the slightest amount of water. Oh, way too much! Oh, son of a bitch! We're just gonna pretend that never happened. We're gonna very quickly, very, very quickly, before our pasta gets cold, make a new sauce. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Because it's gonna be very hard to pour only 40 milliliters of this from the pot, because the pot's just massive. If we pour a little in there, it might be a little bit easier to pour just from the bowl itself. And let's try to get exactly 40 milliliters just into the bowl. Alright. Now add the water. Try not to add- oh, and that's all 44 of it. That's fine. Honestly, it's a lot closer than before. Chili flakes, 5 grams. One, two, three. No, oh, that's only two. I don't know how even that was. Hmm, I don't know how even that was at all. Alright, is that all of it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, nope, that was not all of it. Do you think that, uh, one piece is cold enough? Nope, it's not. I was gonna try and pick it up with my hands. Perfect. We cook that for 15 seconds, then transfer to the casserole. Serve hot. Mmm. Sure. Hot. Pouring this into the casserole is going to be a nightmare. It's also way too much sauce. Oh, no. Come on. Just get in there. Ah, oh, come on. Almost. Mmm, alright. Oh my god. You know what? I'm really happy with this one. This one is gonna be delicious. I think. Sauce looks a little watery. But, um, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Ding ding. I forgot the- oh, I forgot the parsley. No, I just remembered. I forgot the parsley. As soon as I sent it in, I knew I forgot it. I got so excited. I got so wrapped up in all of this. Well, too much salt. It's crazy. There was not too much salt. Missing parsley. Garlic, too cold. Well, okay. Almost four stars, so I'm happy. Well, now that we've mastered burgers and pasta, I think it's time for one last meal from Chef George. And I'm feeling a little crazy. Let's do... Yeah, duck breast with roasted mushrooms. A nice 
simple-ish, but delicious dish. All right, took the liberty of getting most of our ingredients ready, just so that I'm not running back and forth as much. So we're gonna start with seasoning our duck breast with salt, pepper, and sugar. Then we're gonna add to a pan sunflower oil, 10 milligrams, sage, and the duck breast. Sunflower oil, 10 milligrams. Ah, all right, you know what, close enough, fine. That's fine. You never know when it's gonna come out, you can't see it through the bottle. Uh, let's take this, get our fresh sage, six grams. One, two, because that is three grams each. And then add our duck breast to the pan. Yeah, just drop it on in there. Fry for 100 seconds each side, transfer onto a plate, and serve hot. Oh, uh, we should probably get started on the pan sauce first. I don't want any of these to go cold. So let's prep everything first, and then we can start cooking stuff. Pan sauce. Cut apple into quarters, add to bowl, drizzle with lemon juice, add to pan with clarified butter, and fry for 45 seconds. Okay. Damn it. Who said you could break? Oh my god. Oh, that never happened. That absolutely never happened at all. Drizzle with lemon juice and add to a pan. Do we have a second pan? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> nope, not really what I wanted to do, but it's fine. It's fine. So now we're gonna just tip this out. <laughs> Ugh, that sound. Uh, we're gonna add 10 milliliters of clarified butter. Oh, perfect pour. And that's gonna be for 45 seconds. Now let's prep the mushrooms before we cook any of that. Uh, gonna need another bowl. Let's try not to break this one. Cut up our button mushroom into 10 or 5 gram chunks. It's 50 grams, so this is gonna be real interesting. And yeah, you know what? Close enough. Five grams of dried garlic, uh, salt, and pepper. Five grams each. I just realized I um I mixed that up a little bit. I was supposed to make the mixture separate from the button mushrooms. That's what you get when you don't really read the instructions all the way through, and you're just kind of taking it one thing at a time. Well, here's the thing. Where do they want me to drizzle the mixture over? because the button mushrooms are just on a cutting board right now. Did that do it? Yeah. Looks like it. Okay. So now everything's ready to go, now we just need to start cooking stuff. So... Ugh. Timing this is not gonna be the most fun thing. Let's set this for the apples, which was 45 seconds. Okay. And now we can start cooking this for 100 seconds on each side, but I'm just going to use the meter as an indicator because I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do for that. The button mushrooms cook for 100 seconds in the oven. So what I'm thinking is, once we flip this, we'll put the button mushrooms in and they'll be done at the exact same time, just about. Let's just tip that over. Oh, beautiful. Now throw this in. Alright. The, uh, sage is a little burnt, so, um, just don't eat the sage. 
All right, apples are on the plate. Duck is almost done. Sage is very burnt. Ooh, do not eat that. All right, let's kill the heat on that. Uh, these should be good in a couple seconds. Okay. I like that I can just open it and check. And it's like, oh, are they good? Nope, needs a couple more seconds. I'm getting ballsy. Moving stuff around. Using my spatula now. Rather than waiting. Crazy, I know. Ah, f***. God damn it. Pour this over. Very nice. Oh no, the duck's a little unevenly cooked because of the sage. Oh man. Oh. Well, I already know what comments I'm going to get on this. I absolutely did not need a big plate for this. Well, live and learn. Alright, three and a half stars. Guess complaints. Not enough sage. Okay. Not enough duck breast. What the- what do you, wait, not enough duck breast? I gave you the whole duck breast. Not enough sunflower oil. Uh, heating mistakes. Apple pan sauce was too cold. Wow, I really should have cooked that at the exact same time then. Well, that is three meals. Three different meals from Chef George. And all of them are ones that you probably should not eat. And you probably should not ask me to cook for you. Is the ultimate story. Oh, uh, yeah. There's the sage. Yeah, I just didn't pour the sage out. And we still have some of the blend in there, too. Oh, and is that a piece of button mushroom on the floor over there? Yes, it is. You know what? I think the ultimate meal, the best meal from today, was the soup. It had everything. It had ketchup. It had fried pumpkin. It had a whole trout in it. You cannot beat that soup. So if there's one thing you can take away from today, it's go out and make your own soup. I promise it won't kill you at all. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you next time.